Hello bicycle touring friends, it's a pleasure to welcome you to Bicycle Touring Talk episode 122. My name is George Schlackeck and I wish I was on a bicycle tour somewhere right now. But hey, talking about it to you guys is pretty good. If my calculations are correct, we're coming up to the end of the year and this might be the last episode of 2022. To be perfectly honest, my year hasn't quite gone as I had hoped, but that's okay. There's a silver lining in everything. Well, Barbara and I started our year with a bicycle tour in Mexico back in January. We explored much of Yucatan on our bikes, and there are quite a few videos about that in the playlist Mexican Adventures 2022. With the first two months of the year spent bicycle touring, we both got really busy with work after coming back home. Th the entire year passed really fast. I have to tell you that I regret having done only one overnight tour that wasn't really a pure bicycle tour, but a bike rafting trip with camping at the shore of the North Saskatchewan River, not far from here. I would hoped to go on some kind of overnight in mid-October, but then my work truck got stolen and it really threw me off. This week I don't really have a specific tour to talk about and I'm not sure when the next tour will be, but I've been approached by a gentleman from India who's cycling around the world. His name is Jatinder and he was looking for someone to ride with him for a stretch between Calgary and Winnipeg on a tandem bike. That's pretty exciting and I'll be following him. But at the moment it's all up in the air because I have no idea where I'll be standing by next summer. What I do know is that the next big tour will come and I'll be recording it better than ever thanks to lessons learned and upgraded camera gear. That leads me to the planned subject of this video, which was the camera gear I'll be getting when my budget allows it. I think almost every vlogger has a secret wish list of certain cameras and other gear they'd like to get their hands on, and I'm no exception. Originally, the idea for this video was to go through some Amazon offerings, perhaps compare them and give you my take on them. Then I realized that even as an Amazon affiliate, I can't just go rip off pictures of products and use them for my videos. I'd risk getting a copyright claim and at the same time Amazon might kick me out of their program for violating the terms. So I have to be careful about showing you exactly what I'm talking about because I do not own or have access to any of those things right now. Let me start by explaining what I think is appropriate gear for making bicycle touring videos. I'll show you what I have, what it does and what I would like to upgrade to in the future. Ideally, I'd like to have three categories of cameras or call it four because the phone is a camera too. My categories are a good action camera, a decent compact video and photo camera with a versatile lens and finally the drone. The action camera is for obvious reasons. You can record as you're riding and the camera can be mounted on the bike, your helmet or whatever other accessories you have or are able to come up with on your own. I love experimenting with action cameras and often like to hold it with one hand on the selfie stick. Thankfully, most of those cameras have pretty good stabilization which makes them so versatile. At the moment, I use a relatively cheap model from Campark. So this camera is immersed in water completely and uh, what I'm interested in is what it's going to look like when it freezes. And then uh, knowing that it's going to take more than two minutes, I'm probably going to put this into like a time lapse thing. But yeah, this is the Campark Extreme V camera. It's a budget. GoPro knockoff, it's quite good, 
but if you're using it in low light it's not so good and the stabilization i gotta show you for most applications i, I can live with it but one of the things that i don't like about it is when you're on a really rough trail or you're going over bumps and stuff with your bike then the picture looks kind of like jello and, and to be honest sometimes i find that is a pretty cool effect but it is not what stabilization is supposed to be about and of course it doesn't have any horizon uh, stabilizer or anything but you know what i paid like uh, in Canadian money, probably I paid like $110 or something like that. So in the US, you'll be able to buy this thing under 100 bucks, and it's a good value. I mean, it's a really good value. Would I like to have something better like a, a GoPro or a DJI? Yeah, I would, and I probably will upgrade to something like that. But, you know, for most application this cam park it's fine it's allowed me to get a lot of good action footage on my bike just like f for a bargain really steam and water as you can tell this camera has been around the block a few times and then some would I buy an upgrade at Camp Park though? Honestly, no. Well, unless I was broke. My wishlist camera in this category is an Insta360 ONE RS, one inch. I understand that this camera has a versatile dual lens setup, state-of-the-art stabilization, and a one inch sensor. I've never used one of them, but understand that it can capture everything around you and it can even make your selfie stick disappear. The top model is quite expensive, so I doubt that I'll be buying that anytime soon, but there's a lower priced model that still has amazing specs. Then there are DJI and GoPro. My next action camera will be one of those three brands. I think they're head-to-head -head when it comes to making quality action cameras. So this is my Canon SX730HS. The next category for me is a versatile point-and-shoot that can do both video and photography. I already have a nice little Canon. I'm actually really happy with this camera. It has an insane zoom which I enjoy. I enjoy playing with it, especially with the gimbal. However, it's only got a small sensor that is uh, 1 over 2.3 inches and ideally it'd be a 1 inch sensor to capture more light. That's not the only factor that you have to consider when it comes to low light or harsh light performance, it's also the aperture. There's a Canon that's very similar to mine in appearance. It is called the PowerShot GX7 Mark III. I've got my eyes set on this one because of the larger sensor that'll result in a better dynamic range and low light performance. Another affordable camera in that category is the Sony ZV-1. Those cameras are small, versatile and very capable. Then of course there's the relatively new addition to my kit which is the drone. I have two DJI drones already but I think that only one of them is suitable for bicycle touring and that's the Mini 2. One day when I'll completely wear it out I'll probably go shopping again and go for whatever DJI's top model is in the Mini drone category because I think it's sure to be priced competitively while having amazing features. I'm a bit of the fan of the DJI drones and believe that right now the DJI Mini 3 Pro is the best drone anyone could have for bicycle touring. This thing is small, but what's more is that it has a really good camera and the ability to track moving objects, including cyclists. This is worth a lot in my book. I'd like to add that for voice recording, I have recently discovered the relatively affordable DR-10L from Tascam. 
It's a separate voice recorder that fits in any pocket and has an amazing quality microphone. This has solved most of my sound problems. You hear me talking on it right now. Prior to buying this device, I had to hang blankets up in my studio right here to cut down on the echo. Now, I don't do that anymore. It has also made a huge difference outside in the wind. I find it works best when clipped to my hat or cap. So yeah, I like cameras with the mic plug-in or a very high quality microphone, but ever since getting the Tascam, it hasn't been as big a deal. You can probably tell that I'm not necessarily all about having the top gear. I believe in using what you have and upgrade when you can, getting only what you can afford. Today's budget gear still delivers amazing results and it's good enough to capture a bike tour. The key ingredient to any good bicycle touring video is your creativity and that's unique to you. I hope you do get a chance to go on an extended bicycle tour and you make the effort to record and share it. It'll not be perfect, ever, but it'll inspire others to do their first tour. That alone makes it worth it. Maybe you have some tips and some favorite gear of your own that you'd like to share in the comments. We can all learn from each other, which is what I love so much about YouTube. And I'll see you soon. In case you're wondering about my background, well, that's the camp park looking outside of that pot as it got frozen. Like button. <laughs> Thanks guys.